one corporation that does that. Um, so actually, the further potential of hydrogen is a little bit limited because they are already there, you know, huge plants. Also, with the nuclear energy, they try to pursue that for quite some time. They just turned actually down an offer by a Russian company to build their first nuclear power plant. So that's going to be on ice a little bit. There's one big thing uh, with, with regard to Turkey and the European Union. All the last 10 states that actually entered the European Union all had to increase their renewable energy to about 20%. Um, that's why I also do a, a you know, balanced mix of that. And uh, currently, I mean, there is no balance at all in the uh, renewable energy mix in Turkey, so they don't have really an industry in solar. And that, that's why where we want to come in and actually provide this uh, potential in building uh, large-scale power plants for them. And <coughs> as shown before on the map, I mean, we, we're relatively close to the Spanish market with in regards to insulation. So the Turkish, um, actually the whole landscape is actually perfect, at least in the southeastern region, to build these huge farm plants. And because there's certain laws that are saying, you know, you need to have renewable energy in order to fuel everything you do, we're saying, you know, look, this is a, you know, a new product. Um, you already are exhausting your resources for, you know, hydrogen and that's why we're trying to sell it through that. Also in terms, you know, as, as we mentioned, uh, global competitors, uh, you have to think, obviously, there, there's not, not real competition in the market uh, for, for now, but, um, you know, with, uh, as I said, with uh, Form Solar and Sharp, that's definitely going to be a competitor, but the thing is also, what, uh, what I researched so far is that they are actually going to uh, go more you know, for a small scale, like, let's say, implementing that on rooftops and all that, and that's not our target market. Our target market is really uh, large-scale projects, because that's where our uh, main capabilities are. It's like solar needs it's over eight uh, projects in Spain. Yeah. You had mentioned that uh, Turkey was going to enter into the EU, um, which was great. You know, after business had started, but uh, you also said that it was it was helpful that they weren't currently in there for, for setting up your your facilities. Uh, does that change? If and when they do enter into the EU, does that make, does that change the market of your position as far as costs on that purchaser? Mm -hmm. <coughs> I mean, I don't believe so because there's other um, is there Eastern countries, Poland, and uh, other countries that have been their low cheap labor costs, and they are part of the EU and they're still considered that. Um, so I mean, it might go up by a little bit, but the main re target, um, I mean, the reason is. You know, if they were to join the EU, that's great, um, but they won't do that unless they follow certain protocols, you know, being with the energy. Um, and, you know, with the labor costs, I, I believe, yes, there might be a little bit of a, a jump, but, you know, there are other countries in the same category, and they're still considered, you know, cheap labor. I mean, you always uh, also have to take in consideration <coughs> if they actually join the EU, which it's going to, it's a large, it's a long process, so it's going to definitely take some, some more time. And uh, if they're going to uh, join us, good too, because then, I mean, we kind of have a definitely advantage against our competitors too, because normally within the European Union, it's more trade. And also, I mean, we could then use that as a further base to actually expand, you know, in other countries in that region. So that's actually good for us too. 